catch up. Good morning, everybody. On Facebook and Instagram, I am Marcy Zavala with Up to Date Nutrition. For those of you that have not met me, I am a physical therapist. I'm going to call it, let's try it this way. Okay. I am a physical therapist of over 20 years, almost 21 years coming up in May. It's kind of crazy to think. And I have been diving into nutrition for, oh, Instagram just got paused because I moved it. There you are. Um, I've been diving into nutrition for over, gosh, 14 years at least. Um, it kind of depends upon when I start looking at it. I think I've always been interested in nutrition. It's just a matter of whether or not I knew what was going on or if I was trying things. But I'll tell you what, I've tried so many different diets over the years and not necessarily to lose weight, um, but more for health. Um, for those of you that don't know, my mom passed away from cancer when I was 20, barely 20 years old. And my dad has had, was diagnosed with Crohn's, Crohn's disease in like, 1985, 86 era. So, I mean, it's kind of like the, and thoughts have always been kind of around food. Like what is food causing? What is food helping? You know, there's a lot of thing of, there's a big campaign right now for feed the farmer or, you know, pay the farmer now or um, pay the doctors later. And there is quite a bit of truth to that. And I kind of swipe up on some stuff. Um, I get alerts on my phone, so. Um, anyway, so, but today I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about myofascial pain um, and some other pain and kind of like how to know the difference and things along those lines. So, um, what is your myofascia? What is your fascia? Fascia has been, the way I've always described it to my patients is it's like saran wrap over a chunk of meat. Um, the thing to know is that you've got fascia over every layer of every muscle. Some even say that it's over every muscle spindle, so even every little fiber. It goes around your bones, it's around your organs, it is around your brain, it's around your spinal cord. You have fascia everywhere. It, think of it as like a super thick spider web that is holding everything together. Um, that's probably one of the best ways that I can help you visually picture this. Um, Instagram, you're having issues today. Okay, so if Instagram, sorry, whoever's on Instagram, if it keeps pausing in and out, I apologize. I don't know how to, I don't know what is going on because I'm in the same place that I do it every day. Well, every morning. And there it goes again. you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Love it, Instagram. I'm going to try one thing. I don't know what is going on. I'm going to try this and see if that fixes it. I just moved the camera over just a smidge. Okay, so fascia. Fascia is, it's like a spider web, and it's very interwoven. It goes in all different directions, and it holds everything together. So when I explain this to my patients, I explain it that your, um, your fascia, what will happen is it's, um, imagine that chunk of meat, and then imagine the saran wrap or the fascia just kind of getting balled up. That's going to put pressure on your muscle and it's going to cause pain because your muscle does not like to be bound up like that and it's going to cause pain. And what the idea is to spread that fascia out nice and smooth again. And there's a lot of different methods that are out there on how to do it. Um, I will go over tools. I've got three different things here that um, claim that they work on fascia and they, uh, they help with fascia. And I'll just kind of let you guys, um, I'll give you a little bit of insight from a physical therapist as well as from a consumer point of view on some of these things. And a couple of you that have tuned in are aware of my um, current experience and the bruising. So it's kind of interesting. But I do want to get into um, some stuff that they know now about fascia. So fascia is not a passive support system. It doesn't just hang out and do its thing. Um, it has been also described as like cornstarch. So if you take cornstarch and you add some water to it, it kind of becomes a little thicker. Now if you push on that cornstarch, it gives some resistance. Like if you go quickly, it'll give some kind of resistance. But if you push into it slowly, it kind of oozes and moves away. Hey Chris, um, a fellow physical therapist that I went to school with just kind of dropped in. And if you have anything to add to this, please type it in the comments, Chris. Um, she works, she's a phenomenal physical therapist up in Oregon. So just wanted to say hi. And she also just had a birthday. Um, so what they do know now though, 
is that we have fascia planes, that there are about six basic fascial planes. There's one that starts at the base of your skull, goes down to your tailbone. It's just kind of a long one. There are ones that go at your shoulders and crisscross over to the opposite hip. There are ones that wrap around your waist. There are ones that go from your shoulder on the back and wrap around to the front. There are ones that start on your low back, cross down, over your, they start at your low back, cross around your um, sacrum area, kind of um, around your rear end, and then go down the sides of your opposite legs. There are ones that go down the backs of your legs. They even, there are some sites that will say that there's uh, fascial planes that start at the base of your skull and go all the way down to the soles of your feet. How they're able to determine this um, is pretty intense. You know, our science is getting better and better each day. The thing that I thought was super interesting was, is that over probably the last three years that I'm aware of, and they may have known about it longer, that there's actually contractile tissue in fascia, and it's like smooth muscle. So your heart is a smooth muscle. So it contracts on its own. You don't have to think about it. And that's what fascia is doing. Fascia is contracting on its own. You don't have to think about it, but if you think about it, the, or meaning you don't have to think about it to make it work, but when you actually go in and kind of think about the fact that it's contracting on its own, un, it makes you understand why there's so much pain patterns and why, you know, like I'll tell my friends and patients that, okay, you might have pain here, but it's actually being caused from something down here. I always tell people pain in your back is a liar, um, meaning that just because my low back, and I'm going to give you my example, just because my low back on the right hurts doesn't mean that that's where the problem is. Usually it's the left side that is causing it, and that side's caught is, is caught up somewhere, and there are other mechanical issues going on. You know, this is not for sudden trauma. This is just for kind of overall pain issues. Um, so pain in your back is a liar. So if you're hurting on the right side, you're pushing, and yeah, it hurts, but chances are the actual problem is on your left side. Now, whether it's on the left side on the back, the left side on the front, up higher on the front or back, that's where a physical therapist can go in and adjust that, and that's what I do. That's what I help people with. We go in and figure out where things aren't working. We use the muscles to put the muscles back where they belong. We use the muscles to help guide things back into what, they're, what they should be doing. So now that you understand it's like a big spider web over your back, hopefully that doesn't gross anybody out, or, but it's a really good analogy. Um, what can you do about it? Well, they know since it does have contractile tissue that you have to hydrate. And hydrate doesn't always mean drinking a ton of water. There is a big push out there, and I think I've been saying this on a lot of my um, lives and on my YouTube channel, that if you drink too much water, you're actually dehydrating yourself. You're screwing up your electrolytes, and you've got to get that back in balance. So especially for the you know, kids are getting pushed and pushed and pushed to do more and drink more. There are so many stupid water recommendations out there right now that are not based in anything. Uh, drink eight, eight, eight ounce glasses of water a day. Drink half your weight in, in ounces of water a day. There is no science based on this stuff, you guys. So you need to know your body. You need to understand it. If you're cramping up, if you're doing things like that, then there's something going on with your electrolytes. Um, you guys know that I have an electrolyte. I love LMNT. It is phenomenal. It actually addresses all the stuff, and it doesn't have any of the crap that, that Gatorade or Powerade or any of these things have in it. Even though they say there's zero sugar, they're still full of garbage. So, you guys, if there's if it's a bright colored thing, you probably shouldn't be ingesting it. So, just saying. Um, so, hydration is super important. As physical therapists, we use our hands to basically manipulate and coax that fascia into going back to where it needs to be, to getting it to unwind. Uh, DOs, my husband is a DO, a doctor of osteopathy. He learned this as well. I learned a lot from him. Um, and it, it's just another tool to help that fascia relax. Um, and it's super gentle. If, if the myofascial release, there are a few different ways um, that people do it, but the myofascial release that I do personally is super gentle. In fact, it will feel like I'm doing nothing. But what I'm doing is I'm going in there and it's a way to unwind and you feel for it. And you can actually feel the tissue moving and unwinding. And then it relieves that pressure on the muscles. It relieves the pressure. Ultimately, 
on the alignment and a lot of times you know i'll go in there and people will their bodies will self-adjust just from releasing the muscles um what else alcohol um there's a lot of things to say about alcohol yes i know we all kind of tend to as adults use it inappropriately at times sometimes we use it to unwind but just know that if you're even having your half a glass of wine or whatever it is at night that you are affecting your fascia you are dehydrating your fascia your body will go in your body anytime you have alcohol and food your body will process the alcohol first and it leaves the food it may be done when it's done with that and then all the other food that you ate and water and everything like that um, gets turned to fat so whatever you don't use gets turned to fat so just know if you are drinking any kind of alcohol in any amounts that your body will use that first and then it gets to decide if it's done and it's going to store the rest so something to think about with that but that being said uh, one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about was some of the tools that you guys can possibly use for yourself. I've got three different things here. Technically, there's four, but there's two of them are kind of very similar. Um, of things that our people are told will help with myofascial pain, um, and I'm going to tag cellulite on that because that is something that is fascia related. Cellulite, you can have somebody who is in incredible shape and has a six pack on their abs and just cut everywhere and they've got cellulite in other places. It is more common in women. Women tend to get more cellulite than men. The fascia has an issue, whether or not that's hormone related, they're not really fully sure. But so I'm gonna bring up this one little thing. This is called a dry brush. So the handle comes off and it looks like this. And the theory behind dry brushing, and I do this on and off, I did it originally for dry skin because I live in Nevada and it's really dry. So, but the theory behind this is it actually works on your lymphedema system. So your lymphedema system is different than your fascia. It is another network that helps pull fluid out. Um, occupational therapists traditionally are better trained on this. Um, I have done quite a few courses on it and I do feel comfortable talking to you guys about lymphedema. It's pretty simple. It's basically that you do these short strokes and you brush up, going all the way, you're trying to push everything to your heart. There are contraindications for this. People who have congestive heart failure, people who have um, like fluid on their lungs, things like that, we don't wanna use these. Before you use any of these tools I talk about, clear it by your physician, okay? So I'm just educating you on what the basic needs are for them and what they do. There is some anecdotal reports that dry brushing will help reduce cellulite. Now is that because it's pulling fluid out of the tissues and getting rid of fluid that's basically stagnant? Maybe. Did I notice a difference? Tiny, very tiny. Not a huge difference, but it does wonders for dry skin. It does wonders for dry skin, it does great things for recirculation when used properly. It is a light, light, light technique. You are barely moving the skin. You are not pushing hard with this at all. And it, again, it is dry brushing. You use it dry. You use it before you get in the shower. And it pulls off dead skin and everything like that. So I do like it for skin health and removing stuff. I will warn you, it hurts initially because it is very pokey. So, okay, that is one. This little doohickey. So this is like a therapy ball. Um, I got, I don't know where I got this. But I was using it to work on my own trigger points. And then when I heard about this other tool that I'll introduce in a second, I was like, well, I'm going to try it with this. And basically, as a therapy ball, it goes in with trigger points. But yes, if you go in and rub it along in an area, yeah, you can get in and manipulate the fascia. Uh, use it on bare skin, more so if you're going to rub across your skin. Um, doesn't feel awesome, but it does the job. And so the next one... <laughs> The next one is a hot topic. So this is called a fascia blaster. Here's a little one. And then I've got, whoo, I've got the big one. Okay. So if any of you saw the pictures that I posted, I posted a picture of my right leg, left leg, and my lower back. So just to give you a little history, I have pain in my right low back. I've had it for ever it feels like it's always been tight um and i just want to let you know so this little pointy end they say you can go in and work on trigger points so wherever you've got the trigger points they call it you know a, this kind of a thing where you go in 
I did not do that. So the, the bruises that you saw on me were from my fascia getting realigned. So I used mostly this one. I used it very lightly and she has a very specific method on how to use this. It's a, I'm going to use it so I don't knock anything over. So it's a very quick rubbing and it's light. You're just warming up the tissue and then you can go in and go a little deeper. But she's very, very specific on the time length you do it and how often you do it. Yes, you can do it every day, um, but you're not supposed to be working really hard. Do I think it works? Yes, I do. I am not paid by any of these things, so I'm just telling you this free. Yes, it works. How do I know? My pain in, so I did equally, equal with both sides, my rear end, with diastasis recti. Um, yes, let me get to that in a second. Yes and no, um, I can tell you why. But so I just wanna let you know that I did equal on both sides. So both sides of my rear end, both legs, front and back. If you saw the bruising, it was all on my right leg, all around my IT band, and on my right low back. That is exactly where all of my pain is. My fascia was bound down and it's in the bruising, it is breaking, it's breaking that up and it's realigning it. Now the interesting part is when I went for my run two days ago, I noticed that my right leg actually felt light. And that for me in of itself was a massive bonus. So I went in and I did more work on my left leg to see if maybe there's something I, that's deeper that I needed to get to because my left leg actually felt a little tight. And I ended up with bruising on my left rear end. So my right, remember how I was talking earlier how things cross planes? It totally makes sense. And I'd be willing to bet if I did it on my back and my upper back that it would be my upper left that would end up seeing some of the bruising, but I just want you to know that there's no bruising on my left leg at all. I don't have any real, I mean, I'm sure if I got in there real deep, I probably have some, but when I did equal pressure on both sides, all the bruising, so it's releasing and, un, and it's like, kind of like, I'm going to equate it to scar tissue, but it's not necessarily scar tissue, so please understand that. It's, um, it will, it's breaking it up and helping it line. Now, I still have to work out and I still have to do all these things and I'm doing the, I'm continuing with this and I'm going to, I'm probably not going to post the real good pictures because nobody wants to see my rear end. Um, I'm going to take pictures again in a month and I want to see. But one thing I want you guys to also notice is that this little cheapy ball that I bought, it, it works. Um, I think I got it at Walmart to be honest. I don't know. Um, I'm not really sure where I got it. But I did this while I was waiting for these to come in the mail just because I already had it and to see what it did. And I'll tell you what, I only did it on one side because that's where I wanted to see. I wanted to see if there was a difference. And I kid you not, my right butt cheek kind of elevated a little bit. It was like a butt lift. I, I swear to God. And no, I'm not showing any pictures of it. Okay, diastasis recti. AJ, yes and no. Problem being is diastasis recti. So for those of you that don't know, diastasis recti is after us women, after we have kids, our abs have to separate when we're pregnant, and then they just don't quite come back together. There are specific exercises. I honestly give one exercise out, and I've had 100% success rate with it. Um, it's one exercise, and it's basically I teach somebody how to do a sit-up as they pull together. and um, Chris, if you're still on, um, what is your thought on this? Because I know you did some women's issues stuff. Um, so, but I've, it's, it's one ab thing. It's not an actual sit up. It, you just kind of, you're, you're coaxing your abs to come back together and remind them what to do. Um, if you use something like this, you can go up and down on the sides, but don't go side to side because that's just, reinforcing pulling it apart but it's you've got to just read what what physical therapy does is it retrains those muscles to come together sorry this way. so instead of being out like this it retrains them to come together and again I the every person that I've shown this to and I've worked with um, within usually three or four sessions it doesn't take much and that's meaning like once a month so it's a checkup kind of thing um, 
I've had a hundred percent success rate and that doesn't matter how long I had a woman who was about to turn 60 I believe who she's like oh I can't do a sit-up the doctor said there was nothing I could do other than surgery and she's I'm like no well, that's not true we can retrain that and within two no within a week she could do a sit-up again I'm not a big sit-up proponent but sometimes that's how people are doing showed her how to do this technique she was able to engage you're just providing feedback on how to do that so does that answer your question AJ so um do you guys have any more questions about these torture devices before I sign off you're supposed to use them with oil the method is very light yes you have a potential to bruise um, as I noticed with myself you got it okay um, as I noticed with myself it works um, I went in and did my leg. I've got um, some speed work I have to do for my running today. Where do you get the small one? I just got them online. There was a, um, I saw an advertisement. Um, where was it? I don't remember where it was. Uh, probably Facebook or something like that. And there was like an as on TV, I think was the code, and you got something free. So all about free. Ew. And it's like a thousand day like return policy. I'm up for like, let me try it for a thousand days. And then if I don't like it, I'll return it. But so far I really like it. So, um, yeah, so go, I think it's called, um, just look up fashion blaster. I'll text you Ash, um, and see, and let you know, I'll, <laughs> I'll just text it to you. Um, but yes, for those of you who have been wondering, it does work. Um, at least it works for me. So, um, and, you know, there are, I, the stuff, the pictures that I've seen back and forth on whether or not it works for, you know, if people are doing it on their heads, on their scalp to re bring hair back. I don't know about any of that. I haven't gone there because I think hair is, yes, it might be a circulation problem, but there's so much nutrition involved when it comes to hair loss and thinning hair and, uh, you know, just how often you wash your hair, um, like, I thought I was doomed for thin hair for the rest of my life. And yes, it is still pretty thin, but it has gotten thicker just because of some of the habits that I've gotten into. And so something, something on the other line. So I don't know. I don't know if I want to rub off what little hair I've got. So people are doing it for like facelift kind of things. It's, it's impressive. I mean, and it on paper makes sense whether or not that'll work for me. Um, I don't know if I want to get bruised on my face. I don't know if it bruises your face. I'm not really willing to go there because like I do combat sports. I get bruised enough as it is. So anyways, okay, everyone. Um, hopefully that explains a lot. I just wanted to make sure that I covered everything that I had planned on. It's kind of a shorter one, but um, you guys, uh, if you haven't yet already, I have a YouTube channel. It's Up To Date Nutrition. Share this. I'm going to put this on there shortly. If you have not joined my email list, that will have a recap of this and this video. Um, head on over to my website, uptodatenutrition.com, and that's with the number two. And when you do that, it populates a sign-up form. I'll put the sign-up form in in the notes on these as well. It doesn't go so well for Instagram, so... Um, reach out to me and I can send that link to you directly on Instagram. Instagram doesn't like links to things. They don't like being told to go somewhere else. Facebook is all okay with it. Um, but yeah, I, I have a much more detailed breakdown on this in the, in my, um, in my post on my website. And so that will go live either today or tomorrow. Um, again, thank you guys for joining and have a fabulous Thursday. Next week, I should be back to my usual Wednesdays at 8 a.m. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and all that fun stuff. And my book goes to a primary or my kind of preliminary editor this weekend. It's super exciting and nerve-wracking all at the same time. And those of you who have been supporting me through it, I really appreciate it. Um, I'll keep you posted on that. And it goes to the real deal, like big deal editor um, March 1st. Uh, beginning of March, well, actually, probably March 1st, and um, I'm just hoping that it gets out on the bookshelf so I can help people, and that book is all about explaining the difference between the popular diets, what the myths are about them, what the facts are about them, so you can make a decision for yourself as to what diet will best fit you, and if you have more questions on that, 
uh, so one of the things I do is I help people figure that out. So reach out to me, like, share, all that fun stuff. I appreciate your guys' support. Have a fabulous Thursday. And let me see if I can end all these. Bye.